Hey, so I wanted to do a video for Veterans Day, so I decided to ask uh, a couple of veterans that I know, uh, my dad and my friend Justin, um, a few questions just about uh, what they did in the service and why they chose to serve. Um, I did ask both of them at least one different question each, so uh, the answers may vary a little bit, um, and the questions you hear may also be a little bit different, but uh, I just wanted to do this kind of as a thank you for Veterans Day. Um, hope you guys enjoy. Uh, could you um, like say what branch uh, to rank okay. to start? Yes. Uh, Russell Walkie. I retired after 32 years combined service in the Coast Guard and Coast Guard Reserve and retired at the uh, rate of Command Master Chief. Right. Um, uh, do you also say, um, like, why you decided to join the military? Well, I always thought about joining the Coast Guard. I can remember when I was uh, young, I was probably 10 years old, watching a documentary one day on the uh, Coast, Guard, Coast Guard's new self-riding patrol boats, the 44-foot motor lifeboats that roll over when they're turned upside down in the surf. And I thought that would be a neat job to do. And then I can remember going down as a Boy Scout, we went to Dauphin Island, Alabama for a three day weekend one year and we camped right next to the Coast Guard station and the guys let us fish off the Coast Guard pier and the back of the Coast Guard boat so we got to talk to them and I just thought that it would be nice to join the Coast Guard where I could be helping save people as opposed to the other branches of the military where I'd have to go, you know, as we like to say in the Coast Guard, other services train and train and train for a job they hope they never have to do, whereas we're out doing a job every day we rarely have time to train for because we are protecting the waterways and saving lives all the time. Um, and uh, what does uh, serving your country mean to you? To me, it means giving back. I mean, a lot of people have given a lot to make this country what it is, and I just felt it was necessary for me to help push that along and just decided that uh, being a member of the military was the way I could do that. Like, what, what did you do? Like, specifically? Well, I mean, I, mean, I can walk so. you through. My, my career was a bit different from the average career. Yeah. I, I finished college in December of 1984 and decided I wanted to join the Coast Guard. So I had moved home and was working on an old farmhouse. And I called the Coast Guard recruiter and we talked. And 1985 was kind of a down year for the services. Uh, a lot of the services were downsizing and the military was shrinking. So in 1985, they, they only took uh, one OCS class that year and they took 10 reserve candidates and 10 temporary candidates. Temporary candidates are prior service active duty personnel. So in other words, they only took out of 650 something applications, only 10 people got selected to go from the outside. So I looked at it and I said, you know, if I really want to do this, I can enlist and spend a worst case scenario, do my four years and get out. So on December 2nd of 1985, I enlisted in the Coast Guard and spent my first year at Station Alexandria outside Washington, D.C. in the Honor Guard doing ceremonies at the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery, uh, at the Pentagon, and other cemeteries throughout the area. Uh, did not get to work at the White House as a non-rate because I wasn't there long enough. After the first year, I got selected for OCS. I kept applying and finally got selected. So in January of 1987, I went to Yorktown and did 17 weeks of training. I graduated on the 1st of May and was assigned to the Coast Guard Cutter Firebush in Kodiak, Alaska. Spent two years in Kodiak working buoys between Kodiak and uh, Betchabin Bay on the east side of Unimac Island. I think we had a lighthouse on the west tip, but we only went out there once when I was there. And then after that, I ended up at Coast Guard headquarters for three years uh, in the training branch and in the uniform clothing branch. And then I went back to 17th District in Juneau, Alaska for three years on the staff at the H Navigation Branch. 
At that time, I decided to resign my commission and uh, join the reserves, and then ended up going back to law school. And uh, unfortunately, was passed over twice as a reserve, so I never made lieutenant commander. And then I decided after law school, since I had 12 and a half years of total service at that point in time, I said, well, you know, worst case scenario is I do seven and a half years as a second class petty officer and they, and they still got to retire me as a lieutenant. So I came back in as a second class quartermaster and then the Coast Guard in their infinite wisdom decided to do away with quartermasters and we all became bosun mates. So I am became a bosun mate by default, not by choice. Um, and ended up, you know, I would take the test and, and get advanced and I ended up uh, make a chief quartermaster and then uh, transferred to Station Washington, D.C. where I was uh, the senior enlisted, first senior enlisted reservist at the station and we put together the unit and when I left we had three qualified boat crews and one of those was actually fully law enforcement qualified, so they were fully capable of carrying out every mission of the Coast Guard. And I was proud of that when I left. Then I went back on active duty for a couple of years, a uh, special project in Alaska, working on some legal work where I was able to use my lawyer background to do stuff for the Coast Guard. But since I was an enlisted person, I didn't have to sign anything, so it wasn't my name that was on the line. I handed it to a lawyer and he signed it. Uh, then after that, I ended up as the, uh, kept getting promoted, made senior chief, made master chief, and when I left Alaska, I went back, uh, I was the reserve command master chief for the 13th Coast Guard District in Seattle for the last five years of my career. As the senior enlisted person for the district, I worked for the district commander uh, directly, and uh, it was one of the best jobs I ever had, other than having to fly cross country every six weeks. Uh, and then I, you know, hated to leave, but you know, after 32 years, they tell you it's time to go home. So I'm, I'm home. <laughs> so, but I, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I miss the people. I don't miss the job so much because flying back and forth across country was kind of a pain. But I really miss the people that I worked with in the Coast Guard because they're all really good, good folks. Uh, could you just say your like name, what rank you were in the military? Um, that. Okay. Well, my name is Justin Sawyer, obviously. I made it to Specialist of the United States Army. I served from August 2012, right out of high school, until about December 2015. I think it was right on my dad's birthday I got out, actually. And um, I was in the 101st Airborne, and I was a field artilleryman. Basically, really big guns that go boom. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people don't know what field artillery is. Still got um, it. Alright, uh, could you say, like, what serving your country means to you? And, like, wh why you decided to join up? <laughs> That's a very heavy question. I feel like every vet has different answers to that question. Um, obviously I grew up in the whole, I still remember being in second grade. I want to say I was second grade. And all my teachers coming in crying for, on um, September 11th. And I never understood. As I grew up, I grew up learning more and more what that meant as an American having that slap in the face and I maybe I guess that was instilled in me I can't imagine ever going through that again or God forbid if my family was in one of those towers and I wanted to make sure nothing like that was going to happen not just here but anywhere and so then I, I have a kind of military background in my family so I knew I knew that was coming I just didn't know what branch so but when I knew there was a, somebody to slap back, I guess you could say, I found a job in which I could do that, being the small guy that I am. <laughs> what does serving mean to you, like specifically? What it has always meant to me, has it's always meant no matter how big or small you are, no matter what situation you're in, standing up for what you believe in, even if, even if all the odds are against you and everybody's against you, saying, no, this isn't right, or I, this is what needs to be fought for, if that makes any sense at all. I know that's a vague, cheesiest answer, but that's always what I've... I feel like everybody has things deep inside them that they know are right, and are constantly itching for you to do it. It's like the deep voice, say, when you don't hold the door open for somebody when you easily could have. 
it goes back to that saying, I guess, um, <laughs> I've always loved Spider-Man, so like, with great power comes great responsibility. That's always what I grew up with. If you have the ability to do something for somebody, I do believe it's your responsibility to do that. I feel like the world would be a much better place if everybody just acted that out at least once a day. It, again, it's not always something as dramatic as, hey, I'm going to join the army. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it could be as simple as um, holding the door open for somebody or going out of your way for somebody else, even though you really don't want to. Trust me, I've had a lot of those days lately. But that's what serving's always meant to me. Putting somebody else before yourself. So that's just how I was raised, I guess. Would you recommend joining the army to anyone that's like even no, mildly I'm considering it? <laughs> Your recruiters are liars. <laughs> I'm okay, I had a pretty cool. My, the first thing my recruiter said to me was, was you, you know you're going to Afghanistan, right? I said, that's the plan, so. Would I recommend it? Yeah, I would recommend it. I, I still have friends I still talk to. I, shoot, I wouldn't have met my wife if I never joined the army. <laughs> but um, but the, it's it's a kind of family you can't get anywhere else. There's people in the army who are still in that I'm closer to than any member of my family. Even mem even family that I grew up with, there's people I'm closer with who are in the army I I've seen I haven't seen in years. I'm still closer with them because there's bonds that you form. I know this sounds very band of bro band of brotherish or. or like, I'm about to give a speech from Henry, Henry V or whatever the Shakespeare play, but it's honestly true. You don't get that kind of camaraderie anywhere else. And I've talked to cops. I've talked to um, for people in fraternities. Nothing comes close to the stuff that you get in the military, especially when you're downrange. Especially if you had a rocket fly over your head that day. You guys talk about, like, shoot, I could have just wiped this all out. Hey, you want to go eat? <laughs> stuff like that, so... You don't really get that anywhere else, so I would recommend it, especially if you, if you have any, if you have the itch like me to serve and you want to put your country above yourself, then you can't find any better way of doing that. Do I think everybody should join the army? I don't know about that, but I feel like if everybody took some sort of service to heart, and again, I feel like I know I'm preaching a lot, but people ask me, go back to what you asked. Um, What's a serving mean to me? It's not always something as dramatic as joining the army, but helping people who can't help themselves. For example, I had I had a, I had a lot of elderly neighbors who couldn't like rake their leaves, who couldn't mow their lawns, something like that. Go out of your way for somebody. Do you have to join the army? No. Are you, would you regret it? Some days, but uh, I can't. I, I just I even right now I'm slouching over because sitting up straight hurts my back because. Rounds are as heavy as I am, but um, <laughs> but there's parts of it I still miss. There's parts of it I still wake up and be like, man, I wish I could do this today, but I'm not going to be able to do that for the rest of my life. So, <sighs> do I think you should join the army? Not necessarily, but if it's your calling, yes. I feel like if if that's your where your itch takes you, do it because it'll be it'll be bothering you for the rest of your life. But do I think that everybody should serve in some way? I think so. I think so. I think I, I, um, I, I grew up very much with the idea, I don't care what your politics are, the quote from Kennedy that says, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country, I think that should resonate with everybody. Because that's resonated with me my entire life, and it still does to this day, and I've been out for years now. So, that was a very winded answer to your question, but... That's how I feel about it. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that video. Um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to all veterans out there. Thank you for your service and the sacrifice you've made to serve your country. I hope that you all have a great day, and as always, peace out.